Hey guys, Ron Bond, Bond Build Construction here. Today's video is going to be all about spray foam insulation. Behind me here, I'm building a little tiny house, hunting camp on wheels. And uh, I had a guy come in that's been doing spray foam for like nine years. So he's pretty much a master at it. His company came in and spray foamed um, the floor of my tiny house here on top of the deck. I got it all spray foamed. I want to show you some video footage of them spraying this. And... Uh, you need to stay to the end of the video because I'm going to talk to the owner of the company and he's going to give us a lot of information about um, spray foam insulation, DIY kits, um, the density of this foam, um, just some real good information. I'm going to show you some of the tools that they use to do this, some of the prep work that went into this, and then you can decide if you want to tackle something like this or just hire a professional to do it. So, uh, Without further ado, guys, let's get to the video. Here comes the spray foam, guys. Backing down the driveway. To spray the trailer. The camp. Hunting camp. Just try not to slide on my steep driveway. Perfect like that. Keep it coming. That's the company right there guys. Kyle and Son. Spray phone. There's their number. Central New York area. Okay, guys, introduce on, yourself. Logan. <laughs> I'm Logan. Logan. Son of Kyle and Son. This is Kyle. Kyle. My name is Zach. Zach, these guys are uh, spray foam crew here, Kyle and Son, and uh, they do a bunch of spray foam around here in central New York area. Where do, where do you guys, how far do you go? We pretty much go up to like a little bit north of Watertown, north of Watertown. south of Syracuse, down Tully area. Try to stay this side of Rochester and over in the Camden area. Okay. And you guys got a YouTube channel too? We, we do have a YouTube channel. We got a Facebook channel, a uh, website. So a lot of information out there on our business if you want to look into it. And the YouTube channel is just Kyle and Son Spray Foam. If you search that, we'll pop right up. Okay. Same Kyle with Facebook. If you just type in Kyle and Son Spray Foam on Facebook, it'll probably be the, should be the first one. Okay. The picture cool. is our logo, which says Kyle and Son Spray Foam. Awesome. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward. What's the most that you guys do the most kind of uh, insulation work that you guys are doing? Uh, we primarily do closed cell spray foam. Closed cell spray yeah, foam, that's, okay. That's the, the bulk of our work, I'd say right. 95% anyways. So these guys do a lot of uh, my concrete, underneath my concrete. So um, they these guys have seen on my channel a lot of your work. Yep. Um, not so much you guys doing it, but us pouring the concrete over top of it. What do you guys think of that? The, that that's a great way to go. I'll tell you, I get a lot of comments on our, our uh, YouTube channel, Facebook channel about, uh, why don't you worry about it, you know, falling apart, breaking down on right. the concrete. Absolutely not. Oh, it's rock it's solid. It's higher compressive strength than the, the rigid foam board they can sure. use. And actually now, with the code changing, <clears throat> you got to have R15 under a concrete slab, which is actually three inches of rigid foam board. Oh really? Yeah, and I didn't know. Just that. got the specs yesterday from an architect on a new build that we're, we're quoting for a customer, and you know, so three inches of that, or two and a quarter inches of closed cell spray foam, okay. with a higher compressive strength, seals every nook and cranny. It's a radon retard, radon break too. So if you have radon issues in your area, it'll stop the radon. The beauty of it is, is there's no tape, there's no joints. It seals everything. One monolithic spray. It's, it's nice and tight, so you don't have to worry about the cracks and crevices. Penetrations. I know when I started. Pipes and stuff that you deal with, right? Yeah. Around pipes, right? Yeah, you, you, you want it pipes. solid under there. Spray right around them. Uh, a soap well, spray right around that, tighten that right in. It's nice and tight. So. When we do monolithic slabs, it's nice because of the, the haunch around the edge, you know. Yeah, uh, we, we tried to do that with. Top of that. Yeah, with board foam. It's, <laughs> it's a crazy deal trying to get that done with board foam yeah. you guys do concrete lifting too yeah we uh we do concrete lift let's say we're in, the, we're in the garage right here let's say one corner of the garage settled for whatever reason we'll drill a three eighths inch hole through the slab inject the foam under it and lift it up and people ask them, how, do you, how does it lift it well it's the actual reaction of the foam the expansion of the foam that lifts it and we can lift an eight inch thick slab three four inches without even thinking about it it's not awesome 
Awesome. It's a way quicker, better. I mean, as soon as we're driving out of the driveway after doing that job, you can drive your car in on that concrete. Awesome. No thinking about it. And we do pool patios, uh, driveways, garage slabs, barn slabs, factory floors. Uh, factory floors. Awesome. You know, loading ramps are a real failure prone area. They just the pork truck and the traffic on it just tends to pound that concrete down. We do those, lift them up, and we go going down Syracuse down Fleet Pride. Did that four or five years ago now, and I've talked to the customer recently. So never had a problem. With awesome. It. That's because they don't prep it properly underneath the concrete before they pour it. They don't do the yeah, yeah. yeah they don't do the lifts and pour, pour prep. They don't take the time to pack the soil correctly. Yep. that can be one issue. But really, the more prevalent issue and the pool patio thing is really a telltale on this is water. Yeah, you got to get gutters up. Keep water away from your concrete because water erodes under the concrete. Yeah, washes out the substrate. Now you got problems. The concrete settling. Well, we've seen voids as, as thick as 16 inches under a concrete garage floor. Nice. And it works well though, it works really well for that purpose and you know, typically about a half the cost of having the demo done and, and come in and redo it. Now, case in point though, and, and Ron, you actually did the job after we, we estimated it for the guy. Um, if the concrete's all beat up and busted up, we'll tell the customer to give you a call because yeah. you know, it, it gets to a point, if you don't have big chunks of concrete that, you know, a crack here and a crack there is one thing, but if it looks like somebody took a bowling ball and slammed it out and shattered it, we're not going to be able to do anything. Right. That's when you come in. Or if there's rebar tied in and, and it's failed. Well, no, it's the thing is we got a foam that has to have an area to spread out and then lift. Okay. If it's got a bunch of little chunks, it's going to push little chunks up. Oh, you know, okay. That, that makes sense. Okay, so you, certain applications you can do, some you can't. That's right. So that's where they call you and look at it. You guys would know. Yeah. And that's only, for our business, that's maybe 20% of our okay. customer base. We typically, we're doing spray foam in houses. Some commercial work, we do a little bit of that, but we're primarily, we dedicate ourselves to the homeowners. We do remodel work, new builds, pole barns, we do a ton of pole barns, and we follow you with the concrete, we go ahead and do the floor spray, and then we'll do the walls, the roof. So you guys have been doing, uh, which I kind of pioneered the idea of spraying the outside and Endura foundations, mm -hmm. and I think that's working out real well. What do you think of that, some of the jobs you guys have done for me? You know, I think it's a great concept. Uh, the sticky back stuff that, you know, is the manufacturer spec stuff right there yeah. that has limited use i mean if it's wet do anything yep. there, the stuff won't stick you're battling it as a contractor yep. trying to put it up yeah i mean we'll walk in we can spray it it can't be wet for us to spray it right we can we can spray that seal every corner and the beauty of that the spray foam is we'll go right down that wall we'll wash it out on yeah the and seal that foot or bottom yep. joint that's real a, well where you, it's tough to do that with that sticky mix stuff. yeah that's a big Doesn't leak area right corner. there where that footer meets the floor that's yeah. a big leak area yeah, it doesn't take a lot. You know, we just put that flash coat on like we did for you last summer. Yeah, it, you did two or three of them last summer. They yeah. seem to be good. I got the idea from doing it block basements, digging up old block basements and yeah. spraying them. You know, we've done a bunch, dried a bunch of them up, you know, clean them real good. And you've sprayed a few from them. I'm like, yeah. why not do the Nadura right out of the chute, you know? Absolutely. And so, you know, when you say block basements, we do a lot of those, uh, spray those, tighten them right up. Oh, it's a, it's a phenomenal. Somebody's coming here and flows through a cinder block. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> People think, oh, it's a cinder block. Oh, well, guess what? They're blowing right through it. And you can do that on the outside or the inside. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Speaking of outside or inside, people will call me a lot and say, hey, can you stop the water leakage in my basement? Well, really, that's not the right application. You should stop the water before we spray it. Because what's going to happen right. when we spray the foam on the inside of that basement wall on a dry time, let's let's say it dries out for you, but you had a lot of water intrusion before that, it'll stop it from where it's coming in, but it's going to walk along that block wall and find another place. You know? Yep, so, that makes sense. Not, you don't want that water sitting behind there. You want to get right. gutters up, drainage fixed. You want to get the water problem fixed from the outside first. Gotcha. Place. Okay, we'll uh, let these guys get to work. Kyle and Son spray foam. Here we go. Take care.
Hey guys, Bondo here. So I'm going to interrupt the music here to talk to you a little bit about the spray foam. So this is the same spray foam, guys, that we use under concrete all the time for radiant heat applications. This is a two-pound closed cell spray foam. And uh, they spray, these guys spray that right onto the rocks uh, underneath our concrete slabs. So um, the new residential code in, in my area of up, I live in upstate New York. Is you gotta have R15 under a slab for a house, so that's gonna require two and a quarter inches of closed cell foam. And uh, you're probably wondering what something like that would cost. Well, pricing on two and a quarter inches of closed cell foam in my area would be about three bucks a square foot. So you know that would be for houses and stuff like that. Um, if you were doing just a barn. You know, they would still recommend an inch and a half, like for a garage or a barn, which is, that's an R10. That would be about $2 a square foot. Um, and like I said, they're going to spray that right onto the stone. Now, if you're, if you got number two stone down versus like a crushed limestone or an item four, it's actually going to cost you more. So when you're prepping your buildings, you know, if you just put number two stone like in a basement, and then you spray on top of that, they're gonna charge 10% more for that because that foam will go right down in between those number two stones and they eat up a lot more product. So that's gonna add 10% to your cost um, when, when you're doing that type of application. So you're better off using like crushed limestone and uh, when you get all that tamped in or an item four, it's not gonna leave those voids in it there. So um, that's just some information that Kyle gave me and uh, some other good information that he gave me he said the comp comprehensive strength of the spray foam is 38.4 psi as compared to um, actual foam board that you buy your polystyrene is 25 psi make sure you stay to the end of the video guys we're going to talk to kyle again he's got a lot more information about um, those kits that you can buy and the density of those versus what he's spraying and uh, might help you make a decision if you want to use something like that and then he'll go over what tools he used to scrape everything down here. But thanks for watching the video, guys. Make sure you hit the like button for me and uh, share it on social media. And if you're not a subscriber, check out my channel, guys. We have a lot of good stuff on there. And uh, you want to follow this little tiny house camp build that we're doing. I got quite a few videos on that. But uh, again, thanks for watching. My subscribers, thanks for the support. And uh, I'll catch you on the next video, guys. Got Kyle here and he's gonna explain, he's saying,
the whole building's only, the whole floor is gonna be 90 pounds. Explain how you figured that out, Kyle. So this is a, it's a two pound density closed cell foam. And basically, this is, just say it's an average of three inches thick. Yep. So three inches is a quarter of that cubic foot. Yep. So you take that three inches, two pounds is two pounds, per, two pounds closed cell foam is two pounds per cubic foot. So it's one foot by one foot by one foot deep. Yep. This is a quarter of that one foot deep. So yep. instead of two pounds, it's half a pound per square foot at three inches. Half a pound per square foot. So any two by four structure is going to be that figure. About that, right. Yep, about two. About a half a pound per, half a pound per square foot. Square foot. Square foot. Okay. three inches. Cool. So, so two by four frame wall, lightly filled, about half a pound per square foot. People were talking like it would add a lot of weight to the building, but that doesn't add hardly anything. No, 90 pounds? Out, that's right? nothing. You take in, you know, 176 square feet is what this is figured at. <laughs> But times 0.5, you're on 88, so I just said bank pounds. Wow, off. that's cool. Average, a little high here, a little low there. Well, you got the studs in there too, so it's probably actually a little right. less than that, right? Less, yeah. Two by yeah. fours. Awesome. There, but, that's yeah. not bad at all. The foam itself, about 90 pounds, a little less. I want to say the Roxel would weigh that, you know. Probably. Well, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't yeah. think the Roxel is quite that heavy. But, but ain't going to be a big right. difference. No, no. One mouse gets in that Roxel, burrows down through there, he makes a channel down through there, and a home in there. And then it starts condensing in there and moisture builds up and of course it's got mouse poop and everything yeah, in there. So yeah, yep. Awesome. Mouse won't like to live in there. There's nothing in there for him to feed on and no place for him to make a mess. Nice, nice. Yeah, come out. Good. You guys did a good job. That looks awesome. So what are those tools you were using? So the one scraper is specifically made for spray foam contractors. It's just a, it's made by Piranha. That's their name. It's okay. Kind of a catchy name. Uh, but it's just a... Two like a spud bar hammer. thing it's a it's got a scraper about two and a half inch wide scraper face on it with a saw on the side so you can use it to cut some high spots off okay scrape the face of the studs the other thing is quite simply a it's a horse brush it's a curry comb oh that one is a horse it's, brush it's a curry comb oh, nice. you can say it's a high-tech tool but it's, it's <laughs> $4.99 down to a tractor supply oh store. really we That's go through cool. dozens of them a year just scrapes that you know, we scrape it off with the stud face off with the one tool and then we clean the edges off and any high spots where you might have a high spot just yeah, I see you guys scraping like right here. There was a little hump. You just and nope. here you scraped it down. So you got to do that like soon though, right? Right after you do it. Or? Ideally, we get to it within within three four hours. It, it blisters right off. We wait and come back the next day and did this double or triple the time. It oh, just boy. It hardens up so much. And right now it, it seems real hard. Yeah. It, it's it's somewhat still it's, soft. You know, it's a little soft. It's soft enough to cut back pretty easy. Feels. You wait a day. <laughs> it's a miserable thing to deal with. No kidding. That's All one right. of the bad things about full cell foam is if you wait you work Pretty yeah simple well that's a good thing to know for people that do you can buy those kits and they well, they try to do it them. The oh they're not no, okay they don't have the same full cell content in them they're not uh, as much full cell foam so they're, oh. they're this is two pound full cell foam which is the industry standard a lot yeah. of people are selling 1.7 1.8 those kits are about uh, one and a half pound 1.5 okay pounds. i didn't but know that there's less full cell in them there's more open cell in it so uh, it's just not as rigid, not as strong. They're pretty expensive too. I yeah, mean, really. Yeah, <laughs> it's good you brought that up because quite honestly, we install foam at the same or less cost than you can buy that kit yourself. That's what I thought, yourself. yeah, because I've, I've looked into into those kits and man, they're expensive and you, you got to do it yourself. And you never get the board footage that they advertise on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Unless they really know what you're doing, you right. get the board footage You're going to, yeah. They say 600, 200 pound or 200 board foot on them. More often than not, 204 foot kit will yield about 150. So yeah. don't buy a kit. Call these guys. Yeah, I, I, mean, you know, I get it. People want to do stuff for themselves, and I'm all for that. I really am. But right. not when you're working for free. That just yeah, no, no. Sense. That's not cost effective. That only makes sense. Well, thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. You come Thank out you. really yeah. good. I think that uh, call Kyle and Son if you guys need any spray foam in the central New York area. They do an awesome job. Catch you on the next video, guys.